kid. Seriously. Hey, guys. Hey, what? Yeah? I saw a movie. In fact, I... Well, it was just one, but it was Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse, and it was great. You guys want to talk about it? Okay. Absolutely. All right, so whenever we talk about a movie on this show, our classic operation... And this was actually in the pre-show, even pre, pre, the yeah. zero episodes and that sort of thing, is we talk about what we liked about the movie, then we talk about what we would have changed or improved upon, and then finally we give it our special ranking according to our own metrics, be that a pew-pew or what have you. Under that premise, guys, tell us what you liked about Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Let's start with Mark this time. Oh, God. Um, how about I liked almost every single thing about it? I, there's, I have difficulty um, even coming up with the most minor of critiques. Um, everything from the voice casting to the the pacing to the art, the style mashups. I think that was what really got me more than anything else um, watching it was how seamlessly they were able to blend hand-drawn animation with computer-generated Jumping in a little early, my biggest complaint, which is a minor complaint and will only improve upon other viewings, is that in the first 30 minutes, I was so distracted by how beautiful the animation was that I had points where I didn't know what was happening in the scene because I was just taking in the animation because it was so good. Yeah. You know, to to the combining of different art styles, the way they weaved in different characters from the different universes, and they weren't just, you know... Spider-Man with a different hat. It was a completely different art style. And the way they were able to put it together and it didn't clash and it, it was seamless. I, I loved how they they plotted the action so that, you know, you had the thought balloons popping up as they're talking, you know, their inner voice narration and the times when it would suddenly break into, you know, just panels on the screen and you're watching from one panel to the other it was I, so other people have said this before, so this isn't a, a unique thing that I'm saying, but it really was the first time it felt like watching a comic book on a screen. And it, but just everything, you know, the character designs. I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll let Luke and you go here a little because I could basically compliment every single thing and leave you with nothing else. But, but I, I think really the seamlessness of the art um, and the boldness of it um, was really what grabbed me first and foremost. And I would say the art is the, the best part of it, but I don't particularly care about Spider-Man. I am particularly unmoved by most of the Spider-Man movies. I really like Spider-Man 2. I had a fine time at Spider-Man Homecoming. I appreciate that it was good, but it's not a movie I've ever cared about seeing a second time. It's just not a character I care about. This was the most I cared about not just a Spider-Man character, but I cared about a Peter Parker character as well. Like, it's it's a good story as far as developing characters, showing their motivations, moving them forward, that I really enjoyed while being a unique take on this mythology. Not the... Because I... And, and they kind of brought it up, but, like, if I had to see... It's the same with Batman. Like, if I had to see Batman's parents get shot one more fucking time, if I have to see yeah. Uncle Ben talk about responsibility one more fucking time, and they kind of did in this, but, like, they pointed out the fact that it's overdone. So to see this from a new angle was something that I really enjoyed. And not just with Spider-Man, but the villains are reimagined in this. And I like the way they kind of teased you with it. Because the first time you see Green Goblin, and I wasn't entirely aware at that point that Miles Morales was existing in a, a dimension that we aren't accustomed to. I was like, what is going on with this Green Goblin? Like, this doesn't make sense to me or whatever. And then you realize that he's in an alternate dimension and that's what their Green Goblin is. And then you see the reimagination of Doc Ock. And... That blew my mind because I was not expecting that at all. Yeah. When that happened, I was I literally almost said, holy shit, which would have been bad because Boom was right next <laughs> to me. But I was like, it, that just took it up to the next level. But yeah, see, seeing all those villains done in, in different ways brought surprises that you didn't think would be in there. I mean, this is this is the best. This is one of the best animated movies I've ever seen. This is one of the best superhero movies I've ever seen, and it is the best Spider-Man movie I've ever seen. I like it more than Spider-Man Two, which Maya will know whenever we email forth back and forth. You know, best ever comic book movie lists. I usually put Spider-Man Two in my top three. 
basically, and I liked this more. Well, I really liked the animation for a lot of the reasons that you guys talk, talked about. I thought it complemented the movie well. Um, I liked how it changed between semi-realistic and the backdrops to more cartoony representation for characters like Kingpin and Miles when he was um, when he became Spider-Man. I really like what they did with the characters. My daughter loved Gwen. Uh, Miles seemed really fun and was a great lead character and seemed very true to the comics. And I love what they did with Peter. Out of all the different universes, the 40-year-old Peter, who has totally fucked up his life, is exactly the Peter that I wanted to see. But it's also the Peter I think is most likely to happen if comics were like realistic. Um, that was the truest end result of where his life was headed. I also thought they balanced things really well among the characters. There were a few times that I was worried that they were going to have Peter do something that should have been Miles' job. And I was really worried about that. I talked about the uh, um, the Doc Ock reveal. It totally took me by surprise. Um, I forgot. This is embarrassing. I forgot Phil Lord was involved in this movie. And Tom and Miller. Was, oh, was he really? I thought they it was both just wrote like, it. Okay. Yeah. I forgot that they were. Uh, that's what I thought at first, and then I only found him. In it. Anyways, um, I forgot that he that they did that until the names came up on the screen. I was like, oh yes, because everything that happened with Solo and that whole thing. Well, I knew that they were gonna. To put their own take on a beloved character and that made me super excited to see like what the hell is this going to be and it occurred to me during while watching this movie because i didn't particular like soul is fine but very forgettable i'll probably mm-hmm. never watch it again but it funny, made... that's, that's not what you said in our first segment it's true uh <laughs> it's true <laughs> but now we're in the honesty segment where i talk about how <laughs> the only thing i liked was darth maul showing up for 15 seconds at the end this made me really wish we could have seen their solo. Yep. Because I really think it could have been a great movie. And, you know, maybe it wasn't because, you know, ev- everyone has their misses or whatever. But this made me think, man, they put out a really bland solo movie for me. And I, even if it was a disaster, I feel like a Lord and Miller solo would have been at least a spectacle to be seen. I think there were two, there were two instances. I thought about that quite a bit, but I also thought, as all conversations on this podcast lead to, they always lead to one place, and that's The Last Jedi. <laughs> and <laughs> it's true. You know it's true. It's true. Okay? And... Buddy, actually, when you're not here, we don't lead there at all. That's right, because you guys are just sycophants. Right we talk there. about Night of Living Dead. Just, you, you know. <laughs> this movie made me like The Last Jedi less. And which, which I didn't think was possible. Of course, he did. But it, but it showed me. I, I think the characters of Peter Parker and Luke Skywalker are very. They're important characters to me growing up. Characters that I care a lot about. And this was done in such a perfect way that was true to the character. It pissed me off about the Last Jedi even a little bit more in how great Peter Parker was done. And I love okay. that. One other thing I want to before we. Before we turn this into a Last Jedi podcast, which always happens. Um, (laughs) One thing I want to mention, too, is I love the Easter eggs. My favorite part of the entire movie was that the first Spider-Man was blonde and had blue eyes. And was Chris Pine. That's Mm -hmm. very clearly supposed to be Ben Riley. And at first I was upset that they didn't name him Ben Riley, But then knowing what I know about that character and that sort of thing. And just, I think, I think that character, like Gambit for me is so much cooler than he's ever been represented on the page. Um, just, like, the the idea of what Ben Riley is and, and the fact that, like, he's the Spider-Man that has it all together, that, like, like when he is the Spider-Man, like, he's kind of, like, this altruistic superhero. It just, it was fucking pitch perfect. And that's the deep dive little nuggets are there throughout that entire movie. For somebody who really loves Spider-Man, this was on fucking well, real. And outside of just liking Spider-Man, just... You know, I, I, when I figured out what was going on, that we were in an alternate dimension or reality or whatever, like watching all the billboards in Times Squares where they have bad ads for Seth Rogen movies and, and all these other things, like there was so much to see. I feel like you could watch it six, seven times and you're going to find different things they've hidden in there that are little jokes and whatnot, which, you know, it, it, you could find in the Lego movie too. Like they're, <gasps> they're good at this. So I, I, yeah, there's a, there's a lot to see there. I mean, it's something that multiple viewings will only improve, I'm imagining. I, I'd like to say two things. Um, so, one, um, every time Aaron Rodgers throws an interception, you probably find a way to make that make you hate The Last Jedi a little more, Maya. Uh, I've already um, decided I'm not talking about the NFL with either of you ever again. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you just deal Second, with it. Second, I'm calling my shot right now. 
that this movie is step one of Nicolas Cage winning a Best Actor Oscar in 2020 for some movie that he's going to get cast of as a result of him being back because of this movie. Well, and, and Mandy. Right Everyone loves Mandy right now. But I, since you bring up Nicolas Cage, I, that... I, sometimes I hold a match. <laughs> <laughs> the part where he's like, he's like, sometimes I light a match and let it burn down to my fingers so I can feel something. In my house. It's like I'm 100 percent on board with this yeah, this character. Um, that was that was such a perfect mix of of actor and and character for a minor role right there. That, well, that... So, so this is the thing about Nicolas Cage, you know, and like we've all oh the bees, the bees, like we've all been there, like. You know, as much as kind of a joke as he's become, the reason he is a joke, but also the reason that he is amazing in raising Arizona and leaving Las Vegas, is that is a man that only operates at 100%. <laughs> you could give him the shittiest character in the world, but he's going to do it at 100% because he only he really cares about doing it all. So I almost find even his bad performances lovable because it's not someone he's who's... trying so hard. He's, he's a grinder. Yeah. He's a grinder. Yeah, and and he doesn't need the money. He's from a famous family, for God's sakes. Like he could have never actually never he worked. Does need the money? That's why well, he's in so many bad movies. Yeah. Those if dinosaur he bones and to work to pay the IRS back. Yeah, when you have illegal dinosaur bones and Action <laughs> Comics number one, but you know, like. God bless the man. He tries so hard in everything, and when it works, it really works, and when it doesn't work, it's bees. The bees, my God, the bees. <laughs> so I have a question for you both. Did you watch this in 3D or in 2D? I don't watch anything in 3D other than gravity. Yeah, I, I the same. I get motion sickness way too easy. Okay, this, this okay. so that, me. The, the reason I ask is because this actually gets to my one criticism that I had of the movie. Um, because we also saw it in 2D because um, the, the 3D does also make my wife uh, motion sick. And as I was watching it, there were multiple times, many times actually, when I was watching the screen and it appeared that anything in the background that wasn't the immediate focus of the film was out of focus in that way that 3D is when you take the glasses off and try to watch it. Oh, I think that was intentional. I don't think that was a 3D I, trick. I think that was trying to to move your focus towards what they wanted you to focus on. See, and, and that was entirely possible, too. I couldn't tell if that's what they were doing or if it was just a, a poor translation. Either way, um, I noticed that multiple times and not in a good way. Okay. And, and so that was the uh, that is literally the only complaint I had about this movie. That, yeah. That's interesting because I noticed that and marked it as a plus because I thought they were purposefully directing our attention in ways that they wanted to direct it rather than it being just a transference issue between the 3D and the 2D. I can tell you my, I have one complaint as well that is completely different than that. And it's minor because I obviously love this movie is that um, Miles went from being incapable of doing anything to being like Captain America. Yeah. Like in the final scene, like all of a sudden he is invincible and able to do, you know, fight anyone. You know, I mean, the the Chris Pine Peter Parker is the greatest Peter Parker in the in the multiverse, basically. And Kingpin's mm -hmm. still able to beat him to death. And Miles Morales has been Spider-Man for like a day and a half and completely inept. And then all of a sudden he's able to kung fu fight him. So that occurred to me during the middle of it. But it's such a minor complaint because everything, even that battle where I'm noticing that is so enjoyable and the animation is so psychedelic and insane that I'm basically in, you know, Grant's bedroom, you know, watching this scene, which is a deep inside cut for the four people that listen to this show. But mm -hmm. I... It, you know, m most everything they hit, it's just Miles was all of a sudden Superman without real, yeah. really I, I also, I have one more thing, too, that I realized that I am really not going to be, I'm already realizing I'm not going to be prepared for it when I watch Avengers Endgame was my immediate um, almost tearing up with the Stan Lee cameo in this movie. And that... Because when that happened, I, I I was surprised by how emotional that actually made me. And um, he, as far as we know, he's only got one more cameo, and it's going to be in the next Avengers one. And I already know that I'm going to probably be a wreck. I think he I... made the, the other two this year, didn't he? I think he made Captain Marvel and Spider-Man. Uh, oh, did, did he make I, those? I, I'm 90% I'm sure he's in Captain oh. Marvel, and I think he's like 50-50 in 
far from home, but hopefully we'll no, see. I, I, I was under the impression that event end game was going to be the last one, but we'll find out. Um, I, I would also wouldn't surprise me too, if they cut him out of those movies to make end game, the last one. And then you get it in like, um, you know, bonus add ons afterwards when you buy the, the digital package that you get to see the scenes. Cause it, it, I would think they would do that, but either way, either way, I was surprised by the, the depth I felt for it. You know, when he says, Oh, well, you know, the mask fits everybody eventually. Like, Oh, sad. I was going to say, I I think it'll definitely, if they have footage for him in far from home, it'll be Spider-Man. That was his character that he loved out of all the characters he created. I think the strongest connection he had was with Spider-Man and the one that he was proudest of. So, I think if he's, I think that would be the perfect one to, to end on if that's if they have footage for him. Yeah. Uh, two things that I uh, nitpicked on it is I thought some of the animation in the opening scene was very choppy. Um, it just didn't look smooth, and it actually made me really worried for the rest of the movie. I was like, if if the the movie's like this, I'm not going to enjoy it. Um, but it it wasn't. It was it was great after that initial scene. And I thought it suffered from the same failings of some movies like the Lego movie and Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, where things start happening so fast that the viewer doesn't have time to actually enjoy what's going on. Like, I, I refer to it as giving a kid a couple of pixie sticks and then turning up the volume full blast. Like, it was just, there are points where it was just too much and you don't get to enjoy anything. And so that, those would be my two critiques on it. You guys ready to rank these or give your PPUs or what, what, uh, what have you? I'm not sure what current ranking system we're doing, but I was thinking about this. Like, you could say we had three, you know, like if you were to make a comic book movie top ten list all time, I think you could say that three of the top seven, top five, top six are came out this year. Because Black Panther came out this year, Infinity yeah. War came out this year, and this came out this year. And I, I'm... I think so Infinity... Don't forget, Aquaman's about to come out. And Aquaman's about to come out. Um, so we've, we've really knocked it out of the park. So I think that this is a very different kind of movie. Um, whatever star, pew, whatever system we have, I'm going to give this all the pews because I, I loved it from start to finish and had a good time. And as I mentioned, it's not a character I particularly care about or love. But man, I don't even know where to put it among those those three movies for this year. So it's like, this could be one of the best movies of the year, and it might still be my third favorite of the comic book movies we've seen this year. Uh, it's better than Ant-Man and the Wasp. <laughs> I'll definitely give it that one, um, even though I like that movie. But no, I mean, it's it, it's good, but I think I, think I would... Oh, man, I really struggle, because I think the cultural importance of Black Panther can't be understated, on top of the fact that it's just a really good movie. Infinity War is the most rewatchable of any of them to me. Like, that's the one I put on a lot and watch because it's just so enjoyable. But uh, this this is a real step forward in animation for me as far as what I've seen. And I think it's going to be the first Spider-Man movie I watch multiple times as well. So, man, I, I, I have a hard time ranking it that way, but everyone should see it. I, I mean, I, I think clearly... While Black Panther was culturally a, a much more significant event, um, the movie itself is is follows the, the pretty standard old MCU template, um, and it doesn't really feel like it's that different um, from all of the other movies in that series, which is fine. Um, I mean, that's what those movies are intended to do. This movie was completely different in its presentation, in its pacing. Um, in how it told the story, the you know the the art is so revolutionary. I guarantee you that every animated movie for the next five to ten years is going to be copying this one. Um, that this is going to change the way animated non Pixar movies are presented for the foreseeable future. Um, I think it's I think it's even more rewatchable than Infinity War, um, especially because of all of the little Easter eggs, all of the details. Um, but it, Thor doesn't hit anyone with a giant hammer. That That is true. He does not. That's what I but want in Marvel movies. This also, this also doesn't have Thor not going for the head and showing what a doofus he is. So, um, You're that thing from a long ways away, in fairness. Yeah. Yeah. He is a guy. This is, bar none, my favorite comic book movie I've ever seen. 
uh, by a good country mile. Um, I'm sorry, did you say the best comic book movie ever? I've seen. For me, this is yes. This beats every other movie. This beats Dark Knight. Um, now, again, I want to say comic book movie, not necessarily film, but as far as taking... Well, I don't care the qualifier you're going to put on there. I will take the Dark Knight. <laughs> no, no. I'm, I'm going to say from taking what is in a comic book and translating that onto the screen. Okay. Dark Knight is adapting material to a different... Format. This to me is more the best translation ever. Um, I don't care what kind of qualifier you're going to put on it. I'll still take the Dark Knight. Fine, you can take the Dark Knight. I'm taking this, and if I was using Patrick Swayze movies as my ranking system, this is Roadhouse. For my rankings, I'm going to in reverse order rank all the Spider-Man movies because that's what I used to do back when this was a Clone Wars show. So number seven, my least favorite Spider-Man movie. Now there's two real stinkers. But I'm going to go Spider-Man 3 is my least favorite because it ruined Sandman, which was such a good, could have been a really good story. Um, and they ruined it with all the other stuff in that by putting in Venom and stuff. Number six out of seven is Amazing Spider-Man 2. I, I originally like kind of liked that movie coming out of the theater because of how good I think Andrew Garfield was as Peter Parker. Um, but there's a lot of shit in that movie. That That is the only Marvel comic adaptation that I could not finish. Really? And I finished that fucking Fantastic Four Roger Corman movie <laughs> that none of you finished. Yeah, it's pretty bad. <laughs> <coughs> Number five is the original Spider-Man. So th- now we're into the movies that I like, and I like that um, a lot. Narrowly... Uh, moving or coming in above that is the amazing spider-man andrew garfield's first uh job and the reason that i have that over spider-man is flat out our andrew garfield is just a better spider-man than toby mcguire and it's just more real spider-man but number three is probably the best spider-man ever it's spider-man homecoming as far as like tom holland being spider-man so um that's number three so it comes down to this into the spider-verse or Spider-Man 2, I have dum, dum, my dum, dum, favorite dum, 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 dum. Spider-Man movie. And maybe, I think, the favorite, or as the guy who likes Spider-Man most of this whole group. I still have Spider-Man 2 as my favorite. Mm. But I really did enjoy this. I'm almost trying to, like, temper how much I enjoy this. I'll have to see it. Um, you, guys, you guys know my rankings are fluid as far as they go up and down and all that stuff. Movie so, rankings should be fluid. They, they, they're fluid by the day. So, any other things that you guys want to talk about with uh, Spider-Man here? With Spider-Man? Yeah. Uh, no, other than to all 12 of our listeners, if you haven't seen it already, go see it. You guys going to go see the sequel? Oh, God, yes. First day? Well, no, because I have a job and responsibilities. They but... send me to Wausau on the first day it opens again. Qu- question for you guys. Do you want that peter parker in the next one or would you prefer them just to leave him alone no i this is this is this whole movie is about setting up miles morales as the peter parker for this film franchise and it needs to be about miles peter anymore at this point i think just reduces the the quality of that character and it it dilutes um his story he should have a cameo, but in reality, it should all be about Spider Man twenty nine ninety nine. That was the best part of the movie. Let's be honest. Uh, I, I don't. I don't know. The part where he says, "Can you float through the air when you smell a delicious pie?" was pretty freaking yeah, good. That's good too.